Hi everyone, welcome to practice problem ADJ03. In this one, we're gonna cover adjusting journal entries and the adjusted trial balance. All right, here we go. I've given you a trial balance. I've given you three pieces of period end information. I am asking you to record the monthly adjusting journal entries and the adjusted trial balance for the month ended March 31. So take a minute, pause the video, give it a try yourself, come back when you're ready, and I'll walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So I'm going to just go in order, one, two, and then three. I'm going to clear out my trial balance for a minute to give me some room to work. Um, period end information. Number one, a physical count and valuation of the supplies on hand yielded a balance of 16000 so this is very common. You go count inventory supplies at period and compare it to what's currently on your balance sheet and adjust as needed. So it tells us that there's a balance of $16,000 worth of supplies on hand. We're going to peek back at that trial balance. Notice the trial balance says that there are 20,000 in supplies on hand. So we need to reduce our supply balance by 4,000 because the physical count is telling us what we really have. This 20,000 is what the system thought we had, but there's obviously a mistake. So our adjusting journal entry on 1231, we have to lower supplies by 4,000. To lower supplies, we credit it, 4,000. And then we have to debit something 4,000. Well, this is a situation where we have an asset that has been used up. And when that happens, that is basically a cost being incurred by the company because value has been lost by the loss of this asset. So that's an expense and we just name it supplies expense. All right, number two. Number two says the insurance had four years of coverage left at the beginning of March. All right, so remember, we are at the end of March, okay? Four years of coverage left at the beginning of March. So let's take a look at that insurance that it's talking about. Notice here, prepaid insurance, $12,000. And it tells us that that insurance had four years of coverage left. All right, this is gonna require a little math on our part. We've got $12,000 divided by four years that works out to $3,000 per year. But of course, that's what was left at the beginning of March. It is now the end of March, and we're only making an adjustment for the month of March. It told us to do the monthly adjusting journal entries. So we can't record a whole $3,000 of expense related to this. Instead, we're going to go times one out of 12 months for the partial year. Pull out my calculator. 3,000 times 1 over 12, $250 per month is the rate at which this insurance is being used up. This was prepaid insurance, okay? So that was an asset. In other words, we bought some insurance and over time it expires. Again, just like supplies, right? 1231. We've got to lower this prepaid insurance. So credit to prepaid insurance by the amount of it that's been used up, $250, one month's worth. This is an asset that's being used up, and therefore, this is an expense that we are going to call insurance expense. And that's all we need for number two. That brings us to number three. A few days after month end, the company received its March electricity bill for $1,150. Now remember, it does not matter when the bill comes in. This was the March electricity bill. So this is the electricity you used during March. So on 1231, we are going to record an entry. And electricity typically falls under the header of utilities. And so this is your utilities expense well, and I just realized this whole time I've been saying 1231, 1231, 1231. Those should all be 331s. Forgive me for that because this is March, not December. Anyway, we use this electricity during March. And so since we used something or received a service that is, again, cost incurred. So this is utilities expense for the amount of the bill, $1,150. 
And it doesn't say we've paid it yet. It just says we received the bill. Therefore, we're going to have to record a liability for needing that payment in the future, which we simply call utilities payable for that same amount. And that is our entry for number three. All right, now that we've got our three adjusting entries, we need to update our trial balance. So let's take a look. On the right here, I have our original trial balance that was given with the problem. On the left, I've put in a template for the adjusted trial balance, and I've pre-populated it with everything that didn't change. Remember, when you're doing an adjusted trial balance, if something wasn't impacted by the adjusting journal entries, it isn't going to change from the original trial balance to the adjusted trial balance. So things like cash, we didn't do anything with cash in these adjustments. Things like notes receivable, we didn't do anything with that, common stock, retained earnings, so forth and so on. What we did do was we lowered the value of supplies. Remember, we used up $4,000 in supplies. Supplies had a debit balance of $20,000. We credited supplies by $4,000 because we used those up. Therefore, supplies will now be down to a debit balance of $16,000. Similarly, we had the prepaid insurance was at $12,000. We credited that prepaid insurance by $250. Therefore, that prepaid insurance is now down to $11,750. I left a blank here under accounts payable because liabilities go in this portion of the trial balance. The trial balance usually goes A, then L, then SE, then expense, then revenue. Okay, So we created a new liability as part of our adjusting entries. That liability was utilities payable for $1,150. So I'm going to enter that here, utilities payable $1,150. And notice I got to catch myself here because that's a liability. So that is a credit. And then notice I left a lot of space at the bottom because we have three new expenses as part of these adjusting entries. We had supplies expense, insurance expense, and utilities expense. And so we're going to go ahead and put those in there. Supplies expense, insurance expense, and utilities expense. The supplies expense was $4,000. The insurance expense was $250. The utilities expense was $1,150. We have now retained all of the accounts that we didn't change from our original trial balance. We have updated the balances of the accounts that were there but changed, and we have added in the new accounts that were created as part of the process. The last step is going to be to tally up our debits and credits, make sure they are still equal, and if so, we are good to go. So I'm going to pull out my calculator one more time. Let's go through those debits. 263500 plus the 16000 plus the 11750 plus we have 72000 another 11000 and then we have the 4000 the 250 and the 1150. All right, so I am getting total assets of 379,650 in this case. If I go over to my credits, I said assets, I'm sorry, total debits of 379,650. If I go over to my credits, 42,000 plus 1150 plus 185,000 plus 57,500. And then finally, 94,000 puts us at 379,650. Debits equal credits. We can feel fairly confident that our adjusted trial balance does not contain any obvious errors. All right, that's it for this problem. Hope you found it helpful. Hope you join me for another.